Hi and welcome back to our new video and today we are going to be solving for the same block same block that is being dragged on the surface as states here in our condition that the block is being dragged along the horizontal surface so here's our horizontal surface here's our block but this time the uh, force that is applied is not along any of those axes or it's not along the y-axis or the horizontal axis or also known as the x-axis it is being dragged at an angle so what's the difference between uh, solving questions like this compared to uh, the previous questions that we answered so today we are going to figure out what is the coefficient of friction how do you figure out the coefficient of friction as it's stated that it's a rough surface and then what is the value of f for the block to stay in the same state of motion so same state of motion, just to refresh your memory, um, same state of motion means that if it's moving to the right, it will continue to move to the right and at what rate it is moving. So for example, if the initial velocity starts at zero, it's still zero after applying that force. So it means it's still not moving. So in that case, it means that the object will not move despite of the applied force. In that case then, we all know that the coefficient of friction, okay, the coefficient of friction is very particular about the motion of an object. So if it's not moving, then what can we say about the object? Is it not moving or moving or is it called static? So if it's not moving, it's called static. So therefore, the coefficient of friction is our coefficient of static friction or mu the symbol mu s okay so mu s so let's solve for those information again it states that there is no change in motion so it means that the acceleration along the x axis or the horizontal axis okay horizontal axis is zero as well as the coefficient of friction in our vertical axis. So let me just write it down. So acceleration. So here's our acceleration along the y-axis or the acceleration along the y-axis. Since it states over here, it will be dragged along the horizontal axis. So it means it's not going to move up or Definitely, it's not going to go down lower than the surface. So there is no change in direction. There's no change in the state of motion. There's no change in rate in terms of the y-axis. So therefore, we can say that the acceleration is zero along the y-axis. The acceleration along the x-axis is also going to be zero because it states over here the same state of motion. From the condition that it's going to be at the same state of motion, it means it's not going to change direction, it's not going to change the speed, it's not going to change the condition. Okay, No change in direction, no change in rate or speed, and basically it says that there's no change in acceleration. So first step that we always do is to draw our free body diagram. Okay. So free body diagram is the first state. So for your solution, you must draw your free body diagram as always. Start with a free body diagram. Okay, now let us draw an imaginary line along our block. So that's our y-axis and this is our x-axis. So y-axis and this, this is your x-axis. So as you have noticed, your angle is measured with respect to your x-axis. So you measure along the x-axis. So you start here at zero, and then whatever angle that is, it's formed from your x-axis. Okay, so formed from your x-axis. In the next example, it will be different. Okay, it will be different because it's uh, going to be uh, measured from a, from the other axis, which is your y-axis. So we you will be able to compare the difference between those two and how the solution varies because of the measurement of the angle. 
So first thing that we should do is draw that dot over here. And that dot can be transferred right here. Okay. So we can transfer it here. So this is our dot. So first thing that always exists is your weight or your force of gravity. Okay. So if I have my force of gravity, so if I have my force of gravity, let's say I have my force of gravity like this, Fg. In the previous videos that you have watched, that you have followed, okay, we all know that the normal force is simply equivalent to the force of gravity. So you should draw them same length. But this time, I will not be drawing it the same length. Okay. I will not be drawing it at the same length. Instead, I will be drawing this at a length that is about one unit of your graphing paper. So Fn. Okay, so Fn. Why is it Fn? Why is it that it's not the same? So you mean that it will be going downward because you said if the voices are in balance, it will be, uh, it will move, it will change the acceleration. But since here in our solution, it's smaller, but we still have zero, what, what's the reason why, we're with, we're, why we are doing it this way? So now if I will go and visit the force, oh, the force is applied, but not, on the horizontal axis but there are some components because the force is applied not along the axis okay so we must consider the two different components that is the force right here so i have my applied force f this is the normal force how could you make it balanced so later on we will analyze it okay so we are doing it this way because of we need to balance it and you will see the explanation further now i have it here if i count how many forces do i have to the right so maybe it should be equal to the force that is going to the right so this is your impending motion if ever it's going to move this will be the direction of motion so the friction force is acting on the opposite direction of its pending motion so your force of friction, since this is not moving, so we change this into, we add the extra subscript that is S, which is your static friction. So this is your static friction. Let's write down some of the review information that we know. So information that we already know is that your force of gravity or your weight is equivalent to the mass multiplied by either the acceleration due to gravity g or the gravitational field strength depending on how how would you want to explain it however it will still give you the same result mathematically it is the gravitational field strength if we're talking about the weight if we're talking about uh, inertia mass then we're talking about the acceleration due to gravity and then force of friction is equivalent to the coefficient of friction since this is static friction so let's put s and then in our case that is the normal force so the factor that affects the coefficient of friction or the factor that affects friction is simply our coefficient of friction and at the same time the normal force so depending on the normal force that is acting on the object between the object and the surface so let us continue by working on our solution again as i mentioned earlier in the previous videos that present your free body diagram as is okay free body diagram as is and then you can just recreate the free body diagram as you draw as you come up with your solution so that is for your consumption, while this is for the person who is grading your work. So solution. So let us continue with our free body diagram, which is a dot. And there is 
force that is going downward, which is your force of gravity. But we also know that force of gravity or weight is F is mass times your G, acceleration due to gravity or gravitational field strength. I have my normal force and I have my force of friction. But this time it's your static friction. And then if I apply, if I will draw the force going over here, so that's your force. If you notice, there is a horizontal and, nor and vertical component. So let us use the red one to represent our vertical component, while our blue ink will represent our horizontal component. And we all know that from that drawing, this is your angle of inclination or your measurement of angle. So angle is measured from the horizontal axis. By looking at this illustration, we can all agree that this is simply your Y. This is your X component, while the red one is your Y component. But since this is in terms of F, we can say that this is your F Y, and this is your F component of X. Force component of X, force component of Y. We then further look at the illustration. In order for us to represent your Y axis and your X axis, since we are measuring it along the X axis, we are measuring it along the X axis, we can all say that FX, X is, if, the, if F is your hypotenuse, X is your adjacent. Okay. So this means that we are using the cosine function. Okay, so this is F cosine of theta. Since x is along your x-axis, okay, Fx and your theta is measured with respect to your x-axis, so therefore that should be cosine theta. Now with our y component, we can simply say that y component is simply your f multiplied by the trigonometric function sine because this is your opposite side while this is your hypotenuse. And that will give us sine theta. Okay, so f sine theta. So this will be your next analysis. Now let's further go one more step and let's transfer it here to come up with our different forces. Now if I still have my Fg, which is downward, which is not going to change, Fg is mass times G. Now we have our normal force, which is Fn, but it's still not the same, so it's going to move. But if we count, if we go and take a look at your y-axis, the y component is equivalent to two sections. So now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to draw solid lines. Because in your solution, if you draw this in your free body diagram, that will not be considered correct. Your free body diagram will just be the uh, representation of forces. Actual forces, not the components. So these are components, so it should not be part of our free body diagram. So you can redo it multiple times in your solution, but your free body diagram should stay the same because that is for the consumption of the person grading your work. So this is F sub Y, okay, which is equivalent to F multiplied by the sine of theta. So if I have two units over here and one unit, so 2 plus 1 is equivalent to 3, so if I have 1, 2, 3 downward, so therefore they're balanced. So vectors are balanced based on this illustration. Okay, so now it gives you the answer why is it it's shorter? Because now if it's longer and it doesn't matches with the other forces that it's applied, then 
you won't be able to demonstrate that the forces are balanced. Right here, I have the blue one, the blue horizontal component, which is your F sub X, which is your F cosine theta. And then you have the other force acting, which is your force of friction. And this time, be specific, it's static friction, which means it's mu S okay, multiplied by the normal force. Okay, it's a normal force. Okay, so now we can further analyze this using our knowledge of Newton's law of motion and net force, equilibrium, and all those important information that we have been learning. So let us start with our summation of forces along the x, y axis. So let's use the red ink to represent our solution. So summation of forces along the x axis is equivalent to Newton's second law of motion, mass, times the acceleration along the x, along the y axis. I mean y axis. Why did it put x? So this is your y axis. I'm sorry. So let's start with the y-axis. That's your y-axis. Summation of forces along the y-axis. So positive forces going up, negative forces going down. So what are the different forces going up? So we have the normal force plus F sub y minus the force of gravity or weight is equivalent to mass multiplied by the acceleration along the y-axis, which is zero. Now, we all know that Fn is Fn. F of y is simply F, the applied force multiplied by sine theta, minus force of gravity is your mg equal zero. So equal zero. So what I want to do is to send all of this information to the other side of the equation, leaving our normal force by itself. So I would have normal force negative go to the other side that will be positive mg Positive change into negative, so that's minus F sine theta. So that will be your uh, information from the y-axis. Okay. When we apply Newton's law of motion and some of our mathematical skills to analyze the free body diagram. So now let's do the summation of forces along the x-axis. And that will give us the mass multiplied by the acceleration along the x-axis or horizontal axis. Now, summation of forces, what are the different forces? We have to the right, positive, ne negative to the left. So we have Fx to the right minus F, the force of friction or static friction. No other forces acting along the x-axis. So let's have mass multiplied by the acceleration along the x-axis that is zero. 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 Further, let us all replace what's the value of f sub x, that is f cosine theta minus mu uh, force of friction, which is mu s fn. U is Fn, and that is equivalent to zero. Okay. Now, first thing that I wanted to solve is mu s. So let's take a look at this. So how can I solve for mu s? Okay, so that will be having mu s by itself on one side of the equation. So let's solve for mu sub s, or the coefficient of static friction, on one side of the equation. So I want it to be on the other side, so now I will have mu s fn 
and then I'll move this one to the other side of the equation that will make it negative, but negative and negative will cancel out each other. So you can still put your negative if you want, but at this point I don't need to put it because I if I put if I will place if I will move my f cosine theta on the other side of the equation that is negative and negative on both sides of the equation will just cancel out, giving us positive values. So this will give us f cosine theta. Okay. So mu s is simply f cosine theta over f of n. But we all know that f of n is mg minus f sine theta, f of sine theta. So why don't we just plug in those values? Okay, so let's plug in that value. So that will give us mu s is equivalent to, let me just write the bottom part first because it's longer. Make sure that it looks, you know, better. So this will give us Fn, which is Mg, minus F sine theta, okay, Mg minus F sine theta, F cosine theta. So this will be the value of our so of our answer to letter A. So this is our answer for letter A. Coefficient of static friction. So coefficient of friction, a coefficient of static friction. We all know it's not moving, so it's coefficient of static friction. Now, let us solve for the value of f, okay? So let's solve for the value of f. Again, what I'm gonna be using is this part of the equation, since motion, it should be moving along, it's being dragged along the y-axis, uh, along the x-axis. So it's either you can use the first one to solve for f, or you can use, most appropriate one is to use the, the second equation along the x-axis. Why? It's because it is drag along the x-axis. Okay, it's being dragged along the x-axis. Now, just let me just use a different color pen just to make it a little bit more colorful and easier to identify among, among us. Is there any other color that I haven't used yet? Maybe let's use this dark color blue. I changed my mind. Let's use our green one. Green. So let us use this equation right here. Okay, so let's use this to solve for f cos or the value of f. So let me start by writing down f cosine theta minus mu s fn equals zero. Start by now. I'm not gonna. Sh I'm not sure if it's gonna fit in that small space that we have. Okay, small space that we have right here. Okay, let's make it fit. So let's put f cosine theta minus mu s, and instead of using mu s, okay, instead of mu s. Fn, I'm sorry, let's use the value of Fn right here, which is mg minus F sine theta. Okay. So let's have, instead of Fn, let's use the value of Fn right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw another, I'm going to circle it out and then draw an arrow. Let's put that value right here. So now this will give us mg minus f sine theta, and that will give us zero. So 
our next step is to multiply distribute the value of mu s to our binomial over here so that will give us negative mu s mg negative multiplied by negative so that will give us positive mu s f sine theta equals zero so let's keep all let me just zoom it in so you can see let me just zoom it in so you can see so at this point okay so let us leave all the um, oh, all of those variables with f on the left side of force on the left side of the equation and then no f's to the right side of the equation so what we have now is f cosine theta plus mu coefficient of static friction f sine theta and then from negative moving it to the other side of the equation that will give us positive mu s or coefficient of friction multiplied by m g okay m and g we can then have this together so that is f multiplied by cosine theta plus mu s or mu sub s or coefficient of static friction multiplied by sine theta equals mu s m multiplied by g mu s or coefficient of friction multiplied by mg so now let's divide both sides of the equation by cosine theta plus mu s or multiplied by the coefficient of the variable f so we can say that f is simply cosine theta plus mu s sine theta mu s m g so this will be your answer so this will be the amount of force that you can apply without causing any change any change let me just zoom out any change in the motion of our block so this is answer to letter a and this is answer to letter b now just to make it simple for every one of us what I'm going to do is to add an additional question to this problem okay so let's add an additional question what if our velocity over here okay so if what if our initial velocity is basically letter v and our final velocity is also letter v okay so letter v and letter v so it means it's the same velocity no change in direction positive positive v and v so it means the acceleration is also zero so if that's the case it's moving and it is is it's moving okay it's moving it does not change direction then everything every solution that we have right here okay every solution that we have is the same okay? so you have the same process same solution i would say mathematically you have the same solution the only difference is how would you change it just change your coefficient of friction again change the coefficient of friction okay so if so let me just write it here as an additional explanation okay so additional explanation so the same process same process you should do the only thing you have to change is to change your coefficient of friction from static to kinetic friction so if i will write it here i'm trying to make sure that it fits in our screen but it's so hard to fit it to my screen how about this let's move my picture as I know you might be interested to see my face, but more on the solution. Now, if I have my solution right here, there you go. 
So I will write it down. If the block is moving, if the block is moving and the uh, velocity, which means speed or the rate, how fast is it moving, let's say, V meters per second or 5 meters per second, 3 meters per second. And the velocity, speed, and direction okay, direction is the same okay, it's the same. It means this means This mean the acceleration is acceleration is also zero. Okay, so it's also zero. So both along the x and y axis is zero. Okay, so the acceleration is zero then use the same solution. Use the same solution just change what? Just change the coefficient of friction. Okay guys, from coif just change the coefficient of friction, which is your mu, okay? The coefficient of friction would be better if I zoom it in <laughs> so you could all see. Okay. So let's just use the same solution. Mu from mu s into mu k or kinetic coefficient of kinetic friction. So what does it mean? For letter A, okay, so in all of the solution that you're going to use, just change your mu S to mu K. So for example, for letter A, let me just use the blue, pink, uh, blue ink again, so you can see. A, so instead of using mu S or coefficient of static friction, Let's use the coefficient of kinetic friction, K equals Mg minus F sine theta, F cosine theta. So that will be our answer to letter A. For letter B, instead of mu S or coefficient of static friction, again, all we have to do is just change it to our coefficient of kinetic friction. Okay, mg cosine theta plus mu sub k sine theta so this will be our solution so this is basically one solution to two possible question okay two solutions to two possible question as long as there's no change in motion so it means that if it's moving at a certain speed a certain direction it is moving at the same direction and moving at the same rate. So in the next video, we will be analyzing what if there is a change in your velocity.